Now? No. Can we hear now? Can you hear us now? Yes, thank you. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> ¿Hay igualdad de hombres y mujeres dentro del personal de la cofradía? But is there equality between men and women within the staff of the cofradías? Lamentablemente no es así. En casi todas las cofradías hay más trabajadores hombres que mujeres. Sí es verdad que en los en los 10 años que se ha avanzado algo, se ha avanzado algo, porque dentro de las cofradías se han nombrado mujeres como secretarias, que en su cargo, que es un cargo directivo, pero la gran mayoría son hombres. Unfortunately, not, there's not equality. In almost all the cofradías, there are way more men than women. And it is true that in the last 10 years, some progress has been made because women have been employed as secretaries, which is a managing position, but the vast majority are still men. Cuando terminé mis estudios de auxiliar administrativo, la cofradía buscaba personal joven y me presenté para el trabajo, pero me dijeron que era solo para hijos y familiares de pescadores, que yo no podía. Actualmente, esto ya no es así. When I finished my <clears throat> studies as an administrative assistant, the Corfordia was looking for young people and I applied for the job, but they told me that it was only for the children and relatives of fishermen, so I couldn't apply. And nowadays, this is no longer the case. ¿Hay igualdad de hombres y mujeres en los cargos directivos? Is there equality between men and women in managing or leading positions? Lamentablemente, no. Y a diferencia de los trabajadores donde hay mujeres para hacer labores administrativas y otros, y otros. Los cargos de presidente, miembro de la Junta, gobierno y de la Asamblea, solo hay una mujer presidente de, este, de una cofradía. Pero en las demás juntas de gobierno no hay ni una sola mujer. Unfortunately not. And unlike the administrative works, there are some women. In the leading positions, such as president, member of the steering committee of the assembly, there is only one woman as a president of a cofradía, but there is not a single woman in, in the other steering committees. Si solo hay ocho pescadoras en toda Cataluña, es difícil que sea parte de la junta de gobierno, pero que si, que es que si hay mujeres armadoras, que podrían ser parte de y no lo son. There are only eight fisherwomen in Catalonia, so it's difficult for them to be part of the govern, government governing board. But some of them are both owners who could be part of the governing board, but they are not. Aquí en parte existe una co corresponsabilidad porque las armadoras no se presentan a los cargos y la clave está en ¿Por qué no se presentan? Uh, there is a co-responsibility because both owners, women both owners, do not apply for leading positions. So the question is, why don't they? No hay tradición. Siempre han sido los hombres y porque las cofradías se han quedado obsoletas. Because, because it's not usual, it's not the norm. It has always been the men and the cofradías have become now obsolete. Para lograr la igualdad dentro de la organización de las cofradías es imprescindible adaptarla al siglo XXI y eso abriría las puertas de las mujeres en el gobierno de ellas y de las pesca y de la pesca. To achieve equality within the cofradías, it is essential to start adapting them to the 21st century, and this would open the door to women in leading positions. Thank you.
Sí, ¿eh? Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Raquel Yapis, soy la presidenta de la Asociación de Dones de la Mar a la Mar y la verdad es que para nosotros es un orgullo estar aquí y agradecemos a la organización el que haya contado con nosotras para poder darnos un poquito de voz. Les voy a explicar brevemente qué es Adomar. Y Adomar es una asociación constituida por mujeres. Nos constituimos en 2018 y nos constituimos ante la necesidad urgente de visibilizar a las mujeres del sector pesquero, en principio de toda la comunidad valenciana. Y ahora ya hemos pasado un poco más de la comunidad valenciana. Nos sentimos muy orgullosas por ello. Eh, también nos constituimos con la finalidad de visibilizar un trabajo y un oficio que a, los, a lo largo de los años siempre ha estado ahí, lo han ejercido nuestras madres, nuestras abuelas. Tengo compañeras que están haciendo este trabajo y es de soporte a los barcos. Este oficio existe en España, en el País Vasco, y ahora, gracias a la ley, en la próxima ley de medidas socioeconómicas que salga a nuestro país, seguramente ya se las catalogará a estas mujeres igual que las que están en el País Vasco y por lo menos ya serán consideradas como trabajadoras. Ah, perdón. Well, she says, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you everyone to invite. I'm the president of Adomar, which is an organization of women in fisheries uh, based in Valencia. It's a, an association made of women um, and it was founded in 2018. Um, basically to, because it was very urgent to visualize um, the sector. Uh, fisheries in Valencia, but also now it's moving beyond Valencia, I think. Uh, and also to visualize this uh, métier or this uh, uh, way of life as well, that it's always been there. Uh, it's been done by their, by mothers, by granddaughter, uh, grandmothers, and that it's the support to the, the boats. Uh, it exists uh, now as it is in, in Spain, uh, in, in the Basque country, um, and thanks to the next law uh, on socioeconomics, uh, it will be cataloged as an uh, equally in different parts of, of Spain. Bueno, okay. estas mujeres hasta ahora han sido pues consideradas como un atractivo turístico porque cuando el barco llega al puerto, ellas descargan el pescado, se rodea todo de gente y ellas son la parte colaboradora, pero que a efectos de, de trabajo aún no están catalogadas. So these women, they are considered as an attractive for tourism as well, because when the fish arrives, they, they un, unload the fish and it's, uh, they have in this role of collaborators to, to sell it. Hoy estamos aquí porque nos ha invitado Actea, pero aunque nosotras tenemos, aunque estemos hoy colaborando con Actea, tenemos unos objetivos marcados, que es también ser las, nuestras propias portavoces delante de cualquier organismo, ya sea a nivel local, autonómico, nacional, internacional. De hecho, estamos consiguiendo muchísimas cosas. Tenemos muchos reconocimientos ya a nivel de, como he dicho antes, local, autonómico, tenemos premios de la Generalitat, tenemos un premio del Ministerio. Okay, uh, so Actea invited us this, uh, this time, but we have an objective, uh, our, our own objective, that is to bring ourselves, our voice everywhere. So even at, from local to national to international, so we have our own voice spread. And we are actually achieving a lot of stuff. We are very proud and we are getting recognition as well from local autonomies, but also international um, prices. Okay. Bueno, aunque constatamos nuestra labor, que la tenemos enfocada a atribuir la visibilidad y de forma transversal a la mujer. So even if we 
try to do a transversal uh, role of, sorry, a transversal voice, Transvers no? Sí. Of, of our voice. Mm, nos consideramos una asociación humanista y eh, lo que queremos es dar voz y visibilidad ya no solo a las mujeres, sino a, también a nuestros compañeros. Y de hecho, mm, una de las cosas que voy a exponer es una problemática que tienen nuestros compañeros más jóvenes, nuestros niños, que decimos nosotras. So, our association has a new, an, um, human kind of dimension, and we want to give voice not from the women, but also our colleagues, no, men colleagues. And actually, what I'm going to talk is about uh, young uh, problems from the young generation. Uh, yes. Our child, we say. <laughs> y es que ellos nos dicen que se consideran que están discriminados porque los jóvenes que ahora se están comprando un barco no tienen permiso de cuota de atún. Y los más mayores que tenemos un barco sí que tenemos permiso. Y ellos se consideran como no tienen un histórico, se sienten discriminados. Y me pidieron que cuando viniera aquí, que lo dijera. So I'm, I'm raising the voice now from the young generation because they feel that they are uh, discriminated because basically when they um, get, get, so buy a new boat, they don't have permit to, of quota, to tuna for quota, like quota for tuna, <laughs> so because they don't have any historic rights. So they told me that when I come here, I have to say this uh, on behalf of them as well. Y la verdad es que aunque llevemos cuatro años y unos meses, siete u ocho meses, por, porque nos constituimos en enero, eh, algo está fallando en la cadena de información que nos tenía que llegar por vía normal. Algún eslabón de la cadena está fallando porque yo la semana pasada estuve en Roma So even we are just having four years of existence, something is missing in this chain of information um, because uh, so, something is missing because last week I was in Rome, actually. Y allí fue donde escuché por primera vez y donde vi por primera vez el plan de acción regional para la pesca artesanal en el Mediterráneo y el Mar Negro no había escuchado nunca hablar de esto y esto, las directrices voluntarias para lograr la sostenibilidad de pequeña escala por la FAO. ¿Qué es lo que está pasando? No lo sabemos. ¿Se debe de investigar? Sí. ¿Que nos llegue la información? Sí. Yo sí que pediría una cosa. Cuando se tenga que hacer informes, que se vaya a pie de barco, a hablar con los pescadores, con los propios pescadores y pescadoras. Okay, so just to wrap up, last week I was in Rome and I actually, it was the first time that I learned about the RPOA and the guidelines of the SSF from, from FAO. So I actually, actually asked something that is uh, Any time that we have to do reports in, in law, we people have to go to the votes and ask and talk to the officials directly. Sí, no, ya, ya cabe. Eh, tenemos que trabajar todos juntos, todas juntas, pero si no nos llega suficiente información, va a ser imposible. Y con esto termino y les doy las gracias por escucharme. Together, um, but without information, it's very difficult. So we have to work together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we have online uh, Simone, who of WWS. She will uh, speak about uh, uh, how to on the issue uh, on how to highlight women in fisheries uh, through communication. So, Simone, you are here, I guess. Yes, hello. Thank you very much. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. I can see that um, the host has deactivated that I share my screen. Can this be quickly changed, maybe? Ah, yes. And now it should work. 
Oh, I'll try again. Mm, no, it's not working. Ah, it should now, work. Yes, yes, yes. Now it's working. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the important topic of women in small scale fisheries today. I have been working uh, a decade in fisheries business and I'm very happy that this topic gains more attention in recent years. So today um, my presentation um, will focus on why it is important to work with men and women towards sustainability and improvements for nature and people. We get this the question of the why very often as NGO. So during this first day, we have already heard about small-scale fisheries and women's multiple roles in terms of diversity and number, but an overall lack of good data um, lies underneath the existing figures, some of them that I'm showing here. And it was really good to see um, indication of first slide improvements uh, in the session this morning. So why gender equality? So I think the first answer to that is it's a human right. So it should also be applied to small scale fisheries and the fisheries sector overall. But um, looking at the science um, about gender equality and better involvement and acknowledgement of women in fisheries, um, there are some quite interesting findings already out there. So first, investing in women leadership roles is likely to promote faster and better responses to impacts, and this has been shown in recent crises. Their roles are actually central to the development and the circulation of capital that are at the core of the flexible and adaptive nature of the typical family-run fisheries business. And this is essential to the long-term sustainability and survival of the operation. Even more importantly, looking at the recent crisis, um, including the climate crisis and overfishing, um, those crises lead to a growing and emerging importance of their typical roles in the operation. So not only on the boats, but in all um, the um, different roles around the sector, also the indirect ones. Um, these activities typically are linked to diversification and they are key for small-scale fisheries to keep adaptive and flexible and therefore sustainable. Um, the lack of recognition of roles uh, women play in small-scale fisheries and the lack of inclusion in decision-making hinder sustainability and development. And their inclusion, on the other hand, can actually uh, support and enrich uh, problem analysis and solution finding in co-management. And this is not only linked to the discussion that we had this morning, if their inclusion is actually leading to more sustainable decisions, but uh, as per se, because uh, of the gender, but it's really because of the diversity of their roles that they have sometimes a more holistic view on things and can actually come with different ideas um, when it's about finding uh, solutions and, anal and analyzing the problem. So what are we doing as an NGO? Just very quickly, because this should not be so much about WWF, but just if the question arises. So we work on policy. We work with decision makers to highlight the role that women can play, particularly um, in the light of the climate crisis. We launched a report in 2019, which was particularly well received by the Commission, uh, by the European Commission. Um, we work on the establishment of co-management in general, and within that work, we um, promote um, the uh, equal participation of women. We do community work and capacity building. Um, we do work on the increase of uh, capacity to access funding. Um, we did recent uh, trainings in more in five countries, I think, on the access to EMFF funds. And in some of the trainings, like in Croatia, we had a 50% participation of women, but also um, capacity building on uh, new species usage, value adding activities and alternative income. This includes, for example, the use and um, processing of invasive species, but also activities linked to pescatourism. 
We facilitate exchange visits and we have in the last five years really seen a change in the gender balance in the exchange visits that we organize. While five years ago we had mostly men participating um, in those exchange visits, we really now have a lot, a lot of uh, more women participating. In some cases, it's the family members that are engaged in the business. Um, awareness raising and communication. So we have heard quite a lot um, how important it actually is to really uh, change the narrative. So personally, I think the narrative really changes with the words that we're using. So rather than using fishermen, using fishers, so which is more gender neutral and uh, which can really, really change um, the picture that it creates uh, in the head of people. What we're doing in terms of activity, we do blogs, um, we do out of house campaigns. We recently even did uh, one in my home country, Austria, which is landlocked, which was very well received also by some development agencies um, and social media. What is really important um, in these uh, communication activities is to give the voice to the protagonists that are featured. Um, so they should be the ocean witnesses. And we found that videos can be a strong medium so that they can tell their stories themselves. So on the bottom of this slide, you see, see some of the women featured just in the last couple of years. And I'm gonna uh, just show a very, very fresh example. So here we used a partnership with an influencer with a very strong follow community of more than 250,000 followers, um, trying to open up the topic to a completely new audience and enhancing really the reach of the message, um, even to a general public that would not normally um, be interested in the topic. It actually featured um, uh, the work that has been done in Tunisia, where women participated in a 220 hours training that now certifies their skill, um, is governmentally approved, and because it is governmentally approved, opens the door for opening their own business ventures because they have access to grants and funding that um, has not been possible before. Um, those capacity building activities will also support the community to move away from unsustainable catches um, as they can now diversify and improve their sales. My last slide for today, so the way forward and recommendations for decision makers. Um, we need to elevate the role of women in decision making. Enhancing capacity building is really important um, as linking to the example that I just shared. Uh, we need to promote the involvement of women in science and increase the research on gender equality in the sector to really improve the data. We have heard this morning what we don't know we cannot um, work on. We need to ensure women's access to higher education, but also need to make sure that this education actually translate into equal uh, participation. We need to ensure gender screening um, and we need to mandate gender balance participation in fisheries related management bodies. Last but not least, we need to make uh, women visible at all levels, acknowledging the role that both men and women uh, play. Thank you very much. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. That's before we uh, move to second up. I recognize you. Uh, I got just to give the, the, the experience of Anika Stando. She's from us. She's because it's the year, it's the international year of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture. So she's a shellfish farmer, a small scale shellfish farmer in Dardeto, close to Montpellier. And uh, Ali, she, she was uh, the owner of the concession and uh, she was selected at the Regional Council of Aquaculture and uh, Shellfish Farm. And uh, in fact, uh, I asked her because I, I knew that. Uh, she has this experience, so she explained to me that uh, in that, and also it's important because in shellfish farming in France, we have 25% uh, of labor is women. So what she noticed is that uh, uh, parity doesn't exist, uh, uh, the law on uh, parity between men and women doesn't exist uh, in uh, the elections of uh, shellfish uh, organization, fish farming organization. 
when they went to the meetings, they didn't have the documents uh, before to read and go and have the opportunity to speak. And um, so by the end, they couldn't even take a decision. The decision was taken between the, the board, the three people of the board. And uh, especially when she was speaking, everybody was just doing like that. And then as soon as the discussion was ended, it was like they, she wasn't there. They, they didn't hear what, this, what she told them. And uh, finally, the conclusion of this uh, is that it's very difficult for women uh, um, because they have to struggle for the family and the shellfish enterprise. Uh, and uh, according, we spoke this morning about uh, um, working time and uh, work for family. The combination between the two is uh, difficult. And finally, by the end, uh, the women abandon this organization because uh, they have uh, this discouragement on that. And uh, they have the impression that they don't uh, uh, they don't. Uh, no, they don't. Uh, they are not helpful uh, for uh, the organization, and so it's better for them to stay home. And that's why, and especially the other things I know that from the work with them is that all the meetings that are at eight o'clock in the night. And at eight o'clock of the night, uh, uh, women have always to take care of their family. So it's very, really, very difficult for them to participate to such meetings. Stefana? Okay. Stefana will uh, tell us about the uh, faith of uh, women participation in. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we are done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will talk about the role of women in supply chain and in a small scale fisheries uh, in uh, Tunisia. And um, there's a word. Okay, sorry. Okay, so just uh, just to say that uh, if we consider also processing and all the, the value chain, women represent actually half of the, of the person involved in fisheries. Uh, but this is uh, generally underestimated. And uh, if we talk about uh, developing country, generally women work uh, on uh, onshore fisheries uh, to collect uh, um, little shellfish or uh, algae. And generally it's for own consumption and not for export. Whereas the, the men generally work uh, for export uh, product. So um, having this in mind, when we start uh, to, to do the Nemo Cantara project, which is a project uh, uh, done by Siambari in Tunisia, and uh, we had uh, in our um, in our objective to help a woman. We try to understand uh, which are effectively the role of the of the woman uh, in the fishery sector in Tunisia, because uh, what happened, what uh, what we see, it's uh, uh, as, as um, perception. It was that uh, women actually are involved in uh, the most important uh, part of the value chain. Is that it's the woman that help the product to increase the value because if you don't process a product, it, it worth less. It it worth half, and uh, they work in uh, clams. That it's uh, the most valuable product uh, sell in the international market at the moment in, uh, in Tunisia. So um, we start to to see the statistics and we discover that actually roughly forty four thousand um, thousand women work in a clams collector, uh, collection sector, and uh, they harvest uh, roughly 700 tons. Unfortunately, I just uh, would, would like to say the end of the story because it, unfortunately the clams collection, it's uh, an unsuccessful story of how to not manage a resource. Because now, uh, from it's now two years that the uh, Ministry of Agriculture in Tunisia blocked completely the, the, the fisheries of clams because it uh, was probably under fishing, uh, but uh, they don't go too much in deep. 
And uh, but uh, it's uh, really interesting because it was a sector that uh, almost uh, uh, in, uh, implicated only women, and uh, uh, it represents one percent of the value of total export in fisheries in Tunisia. It's a huge uh, considering that Tunisia is one of the most important countries that export uh, not only uh, fish product but also uh, not only fish product uh, fished in uh, Tunisia but also processed one from other countries that are processed in Tunisia and sell in Europe. So what we did, it's uh, we tried to contact the cooperative uh, in Tunisia that are called uh, GDAP, and we tried to, to, to make a diagnosis with them. So we divide the, the analysis in three parts. In the first time, uh, we tried to understand which was the, the chief of these organization, and we tried to talk with them to understand their point of view. Then we, do, uh, we did uh, some uh, rural appraisal, uh, um, participatory rural appraisal, and then we did some one-to-one uh, -one interview. At the end of the of this uh, of this job, we 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 did we implemented 21 rural, uh, participatory rural appraisal with community with women and men and sometimes with only with women, and then we interview roughly the 17 percent uh, of the total member of this association, and we try to to keep the correct ratio with men and women to have a representative um, sample of it. So, uh, and naturally at the end, uh, we, we told with them, we, we, we explained to them what we find. So uh, here, just a little map, uh, we work in this area that it's uh, actually in the Gulf of Tunisia, or Tunisia in this part. So what we found, it's uh, uh, quite, uh, for, for us it was a surprise because the vast majority of the, the purple one are women and the blue are men. The region of Gabes and Min are, um, we, we talk only about uh, small scale fisheries, huh? we don't talk about industrial fisheries. But uh, we were surprised to discover that uh, most, more than uh, half of the members of this association are women. And uh, okay, uh, not surprising, in Medin uh, were less women because uh, uh, the clams collection is most important in Gabes region than in Medin. And this is reflected also in the demography of, uh, of this uh, different association. But was it interesting that uh, okay uh, okay if you if you see these uh, these two community I don't know if you if I, you, I can, okay I'm sorry so we find that uh, this part of this percentage of men in in this case it's two percent of of the total um, associate of uh, one thousand associate are the chief actually and they don't know even how to collect uh, clams. So, so this was interesting because um, a tool that it, it was uh, thought to help women to organize themselves for selling product at the end was taken by men that uh, that collect. And when we asked women why, and often was uh, was the exigence of women they they don't uh, feel comfortable to manage an association an association and uh, to manage money. So it was uh, was really interesting this. So, uh, and also what we, we, we found that it's interesting because uh, uh, let's say what we, we generally, what happened globally is that men, uh, it's more to export and they work in the most uh, value, most important um, fish product in terms of value and women in a less important. In Tunisia actually it's the reverse because the more uh, artisanal fishing, it's more for local market and uh, uh, sea bream and sea bass, they don't reach uh, uh, the, the value of, uh, of clams and woman works in export product and most valuable for the product. But if we, we look at the salary, uh, actually women uh, roughly reach the half of the medium salary in Tunisia. So this means that uh, there are a huge inequality in women and men uh, salary and, and uh, retribution. And also I'm considering that clams are most important as more valuable than products sold by men. So uh, okay, I, I will not show all the all the data from the interview because it was quite quite um, quite huge amount of questions. So one hour uh, one hour and a half questionnaire for uh, uh, roughly five hundred person. But uh, uh, was interesting also to notice that uh, the the the, um, the analphabet um, uh, amount of person was higher in the woman, and uh, the higher education was a. Uh, was less for women than for men, and so present. Probably this is part of the reason for why women are, are um, have problems to manage also association in this in this context. 
And uh, also we, we ask to them uh, to say which are her opinion, because sometimes it's important also to understand what they think, why, why, what, how they justify the fact that the clumps uh, reduce the, um, it's reduced the amount in the, we were during the time. And what we found, okay, uh, the majority was agreed that uh, actually there were a uh, diminution of this, but uh, I, I found really interesting that uh, they put as the first reason uh, the pollution, then uh, the blue crab, that it's an invasive species uh, in Tunisia, then uh, I don't know, then uh, it's normal uh, biological cycle of, of uh, clams, and only at the fifth position they put uh, overfishing, that it's probably the main reason for which uh, uh, there are not any more clams. Okay, probably there are also the other one, but it's uh, it's most probable because uh, when you see the statistic of collection also, um, you see that when uh, there are some uh, scholar break, the productivity of uh, clam salmon um, increase because uh, the, the people go from the school, they go to, to take some, some money by fishing clams. So, um, so it, it was quite, uh, quite interesting. Uh, so what happened now that uh, actually the woman that works uh, um, the, the most important uh, job for women in fisheries, it became the uh, blue crab processing that uh, in, uh, it was uh, recorded for the first time in 2014. And now it's one of the, it, it, I think uh, it, it's uh, the most important product fished in, uh, in Gabes, in uh, the past. Uh, uh, it go um, we we before traditionally we fish more anchovy than uh, any other product in Tunisia. Now we fish more blue crab than any other product, also more than anchovy. So we reach like uh, only for export. So without uh, considering the the waste product uh, and uh, the local market product, uh, the last years uh, they were well uh, sell like uh, seven thousand and six hundred tons. So it's, uh, it's an impressive amount. And also, it, it, this is important because uh, the 75% of the, of the work in this sector are women. And also, uh, in this case, it's really the, the woman job that makes the value of this problem because the problem doesn't work nothing practically as a, as a product, as a work product, but thanks to the, the work of the woman can increase uh, the, the value. So, uh, just uh, to close, uh, I would like to say that uh, often uh, we don't talk, uh, when we talk about supply chain, value chain, we never talk about uh, the well-educated and the, the people they do, um, they do, they work in laboratory, that generally are women in Europe also, and uh, in Tunisia as well. And uh, I, I, I think this is interesting because it's also there in, the, in uh, quality control, in sanitary check, that are the value added of fishers because if you can guarantee a good quality of product and um, uh, it's a, it's a laboratory job that is done in a, in a, the majority of cases by women. So here, just I put a table of the main uh, the main uh, thing that we find. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, uh, just uh, I don't I don't go I will not go through, but uh, we just uh, we just find that uh, there are actually um, a big relation between. Uh, the economic uh, problem and uh, uh, environmental um, uh, environmental sustainability and the risk for consumer. Because uh, the problem is that the less uh, a fisherman can gain from uh, his, his catch, the more it's prone to do illicit fish. And the illicit fish uh, make also most, more, more, more probable the, that uh, the fish are sold without any sanitary check. So it, it's a problem of everybody. It's not only a problem for the fisherman that uh, he, he cannot earn uh, his salary. It's a problem also for the society. So thank you for uh, the attention. I think we have all, uh, we had all the presentations today. And I think now it's the time to give the floor to you. <laughs> Too many presentations today, I think. Is it okay? I know. I'm going to close it and see if I can turn it so that. Okay. No, don't shut it. Let me just uh, switch off okay. here because it's like. Sorry about that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, well, we didn't have QA but a session before the break. So, I will open the floor to anyone. 
with having maybe questions, comments, statements, uh, feelings <laughs> to share with us on the presentations from this before the break or in the women in fisheries. I see other women in fisheries in the in the audience as well. Macarena, Tebe. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, I would like to ask, I'm sorry, don't mind your name, but you talk about quota for the young people, and I was interested to, to understand which are, uh, you say it's a two problems that uh, the young people generally uh, go in the fishery market and they are, um, they have to, uh, to work with a uh, conflict with the past generation because they have quota and, uh, and uh, the other one has quota and they don't. And which are your propositions? What, what, what can work in your Okay, I hope other jóvenes que se hacen un barco nuevo, como no tienen histórico, no tienen cuotas, derecho a cuotas. Eh, nosotros que ya tenemos una edad, 57, 58 años, nuestro barco sí que tiene derecho a cuota. La solución, reducir parte de la cuota de los demás y repartir para todos. A ver, todos somos un árbol y todos formamos parte de ese árbol como hojas y se tiene que repartir para todos. Los jóvenes, eh, lo que no podemos hacer es... Um, so they don't have to sacrifice. They, for example, that they have already been paid, they're focused on they have to sell and they can do it. The solution instead is that to take from those who have and share it for everything. And they give this image of us all being part of the Lo que no podemos hacer es pretender que haya relevo generacional que se involucre más gente joven si no les damos facilidades. Y tampoco está fácil porque ellos ven ahora lo que estamos, lo que estamos sufriendo, lo que estamos padeciendo. Vamos a menos. Y claro, ellos ven que vamos a menos, los capturas, así no podemos, no podemos tener mucho relevo generacional porque ellos mismos dicen ¿Qué hago? ¿Sigo o no sigo? Eso es mi problema. Yeah, just part of that for people they don't know about the system. And in Mediterranean, we don't know about the system. Look yet. It will come maybe soon in the western part of Mediterranean. But uh but in fact uh, to access quota, you have uh, okay, the time distribution is done uh, by the step or three. Yeah. Uh, then beyond Codas can be individuals or transferable or not. But you have to then, uh, to get coded, you have to show that you fish for three years when they distribute. And so you have to record that what you fish. If you don't do it, you will not access to your normal code. Because traditionally, there are some, uh, I work for some here in Les Narabun in Italy. Uh, and there are some traditional systems that uh, work on uh, on auction actually, and they, they just uh, divide uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different uh, idea. But uh, 
It cannot because the quota system based on space, you have a limited space. Here, the quota, the total amount of the quota is changing years by years. So the point is that, and well, we are talking about looking to that. So we are, uh, okay, uh, so we are talking about a piece of gold moving in the water. So the quarter, the quarter of the blue tuna is is a particular is a particular quarter. So the point is that the ones who traditionally own the quarter that uh, doesn't want first they don't want that the state increase their quota because they want to maintain their market and. Okay, the, the ones owning the quota could say, okay, I want to be good with the new generation. I can uh, renounce part of my quota. But since we are talking about looking tuna, nobody is renouncing about the quota, right? So the, the point is that in this game of the quota of the looking tuna, there are, it's a power game, right? With the industrial officials and the states, are you, so, so it's, it's quite a, a complex system. The best option is to increase the overall quota since the tuna stocks are doing well. But the states, they don't want to reopen that because it needs more controls. Because now, let's use the Italian case, we have 17 votes to control. If we open the quota and we distribute the quota to the small scale fish, that is true, it has to be done. The national administration has to control maybe 300, 400, 600 that different vessels because the, the IU on grouping tuna is something that has to be really monitored, not the other thing. So it's it's a very complex issue that has to be solved. And Raquel is totally right, has to be solved because it's uh, the best way to open to the young generation to give them a quarter of the grouping tuna because grouping tuna is, is money, right? It's not anxious. Okay, yeah. right? it's mine. So it has to be solved. I wanted to say that it's really important, but it's it become not transferable because it is the bank the come after three years, one year, four years transferable, everybody will sell it to the best of friends. But if it is not transferable, you cannot give that to the young ones. Los primeros que se quejan de que no tienen relevo generacional son los primeros que tienen cuota de atún. Entonces, Estamos hablando de relevo generacional, de economía sostenible, del bien común, pero hay muchos que lo quieren para mí y nada para ti. Y me toca a mí, me toca a mí porque se lo prometí sacar este tema aquí. Entonces, si tenía la oportunidad, lo hago con mucho gusto. Con... Yo les digo mis niños, tienen casi 40 años, ¿eh? Yo les digo mis niños. Pero es, es los primeros que no, que no quieren repartir la cuota son los que se están quejando que no hay relevo generativo. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just have a question for the, um, the whole panel and the speakers earlier. Um, just are there any examples of practical financial supports for women in fisheries, for example, uh, a tax credit or some direct support that recognizes their contribution? Would you want to repeat the question? Yeah, we got the idea. We have stand up, stand up. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the question is but Are there any direct financial uh, supports for women in fisheries, for example, a uh, tax break or um, some other direct financial contribution that can be recognized? 
the role of work in fishery. You know, I haven't come across any something that we're looking at in Ireland. And just ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just in general, yeah. No. I think uh, well, uh, in Catalonia, I think there's a like kind of a reward, but I can assure like tomorrow I can tell you for sure. But I think there's a reward for uh, Fisher's Cofradia that has like women on the what was explaining, Maribel. So if they have women like on power bodies. There's a like an extra, but I can I I will tell you for sure tomorrow. But there's no money directly no, to the women. No to the women involved. It's I think it's for the cofradia. Those two I think, yeah. But I will I can yeah, tell you, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, in it's oh. in Italy there are uh, funds, public national public funds for uh, female inter uh, entrepreneurships. I'm not able to pronounce the, 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 that word in English. It's for all, not only for fishers. And uh, yes, there are things and things. But I have to say that fisherwomen are not yet, let's say, able to get those funds. And this is part of the capacity building that has to be done. Yeah. But, but, but in some way, you are not because, for example, you are thinking you know, you can be the yeah. house for you, you know, for young fishermen up to 25, to up to 30, up to, to start the uh, fishing. So, for example, in the CFP or in the Sanction Fund, they can ask here, you and women, but they didn't do it. So the, the only money that the women, the uh, no, no, it's not you. Yeah, there's an interesting question about incentivizing gender equity in fisheries. It seems to me that the challenge is that you are not accounting for financially the better work that women do. And society never does a great job in paying for the women's unpaid labor. And so what incentive do you have for a women's current fishery who then have to see is it worth it to trade off my financial responsibility? Or is it enough when you hire someone to help you take care of my kids? I would love to do a little bit of those connections as well. So that would be an interesting question. Y hay muchas que renuncian a tener hijos por ir al mar. Aquí tenemos todo un ejemplo. Yeah, I can make a question on the Luca example. Is fishing is increasing due to the state incentive or something to increase this because it's an invasive species and the government is paying for going to fish this invasive species to somehow solve the high problem that is causing the ecosystem? 
Or is it because they can make profit they can make sustainable for the patient population? Because I have I know that there are some examples in which like governments are trying to incentive the, the provision of the basic species, trying to solve the yeah. list of problem uh, of this, but I don't I don't know if this mm -hmm. is the case of the that is that they have to yeah, yeah, no, I don't mind. But it was a was uh, okay. There, there, there were there was some uh, support uh, by by international organization uh, that uh, that helped them uh, to make the first NAS uh, uh, for for fishing, no? Uh, but uh, um, maybe it was private sector that pushed it because uh, there exists a market for uh, blue trout and for processing one, and the uh, Turkish uh, uh, from Turkey, from Berlin, uh, from Spain, uh, there are a lot of uh, important that uh, just uh, uh, start to buy some nuts and to, to give them to the fishers, to, to the fishermen, and they start to collect, and uh, at, at first we have problems, they call uh, the blue carb in uh, Tunisia, they say dash, like the berries, uh, they call it this, so, uh, but uh, now it, it's become a resource. So I mean, it was a uh, completely private. Yeah, yeah. No, no particular issue. Now the problem they have is the sustainability of, of this because uh, uh, all these processing processed products make a lot of waste that uh, they 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 are not able to manage. And uh, the waste from crab is uh, it's uh, something like uh, toxic. It's uh, smell bad, and you can feel it. Uh, by kilometers and it's a big big problem now. So so probably I think that in the next year this will be the part where the government will not pay back. But uh, for the future, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Just uh, by way of closing, I was very curious on your uh, on your presentation because since uh, I don't know 10 or 15 years we already have, and I met the ladies coming from Tunisia of this successful uh, project uh, done by EHAO mainly. And now you tell us that uh, the resources are over exploited. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, but, it's but, it's, it's, but it means that somewhere the work uh, was not done well. Because, for example, in, uh, in, in Spain, in, I take the example of Galicia, uh, at least uh, the work uh, they done. Uh, the, the stock is there, it's not uh, over exploited. I mean, the organization they gave locally. So I am wondering what is going on with the successful story of Pau. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say on oh, Pau. Yeah, no, uh, I didn't say it. I didn't think that it's uh, Pau was not. What I want to say is that uh, it can't be because the problem is uh, to make something sustainable in an in a environmental point of view. You must be uh, sustainable in a social community. And if you have uh, some uh, some woman that doesn't have any identity, it's not a problem of how or uh, of the community of the country, but for the people that they can get the only uh, uh, because the 500 dinars uh, is like uh, 100 and 50 euros. It's a nothing, and it's nothing also for a million. So, a, so the problem is that it is power and invest a lot, but if there are a lot of social inequality and women that cannot have any to go there, because I, I, I keep it uh, short, but uh, it is much, um, much complex because uh, the women that uh, collect the plants often are not from the coast, but are, are from uh, the internal part of the of, 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 um, Tunisia. Because they are the forest part, because the coastal area are the richer. It's true that even plants come from the coast, but it's also true that the most forests are inside, in the countryside, they are not from the coast. And uh, it's the same uh, mechanism that, uh, that works for uh, tomato collection. Uh, some uh, somebody come in the in the countryside, collect woman, the costume. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I'm going to really fight. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 
Excellent presentations and there are also big discussion. Just a bit of it, I wish I could uh, say something. Uh, I'm working for a year, but not specifically on those issues. Uh, I don't know if there have been ups and downs. Also, I'm thinking how uh, women, when they are successful, sometimes there are then men who begin seeing this yeah. profit. Uh, so that's another aspect of it. Uh, yeah. Women may get uh, continue certain activities, but when there's suddenly a lot of money in it, then there's, um, I can take over from it. I haven't seen this specifically in this country, but I've seen it in other. Okay, having said that, I have noted um, some uh, uh, some uh, some notes from the sessions. So if I'm not trying to summarize that a bit, what we talked about before the break from participation and capacity development, we we heard um, about the importance of small scale fisheries in the land that we um, of course we all well aware of. And we also got some more details about this uh, regional plan of action that um, GFCM and its member states have signed. That is a regional instrument for implementing the small scale fisheries guidelines, which is the international instrument for small scale fisheries. And uh, this plan of action covers um, several areas. It includes not then only what she said, more conventional fisheries management, but it goes beyond that. And, What's that socioeconomic aspects, value chain, gender, etc. And then we also have the, about work by uh, Life on the small fish value chain and implemented the community of practice initiative, bringing producers and consumers together based on shared values, and um, which is helping fishers to become price makers, not only price takers. Then um, WWF talked to us about co-management and how important it is also as a catalyst for implementing the regional plan of action. And WWF is engaging with small fisheries for co-management as a solution to the sustainability of the sustainability threats and do exist. But it needs to um, scale up, scaling up, scaling deep, I think, half a set, um, to, to really see some impact. And it includes um, uh, many actors to be involved to promote this. And it includes empowerment and capacity development, and to have um, an aiding and legislation. So we heard a bit more about this um, legislation, and this is uh, a key pillar for successful co-management is that we have the legal provisions to be able to implement it. And um, in many cases, then we may need to look at the national law and see how it needs to be developed. And these processes also need to be participatory to make sure that you have what you need for the continued co-management and participatory arrangements. And um, I would also need to take the natural context into consideration um, as countries are different. And um, we have a couple of examples of how this has panned out in Catalonia, in Portugal, and also in Greece. Um, then we have a lot of co management, uh, you know, co management in NPAs, promoted by NEPAN. That also have developed tools and uh, provides training for MP management. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at the end of that session, we had a presentation by MEDAC about the goal and setup of, of MEDAC organizations. This membership, in, membership includes 60% fisheries interest and 40% other groups. And how um, this advisory body. Um, Develops advice in a participatory way to feed into decision decision making processes in in the GFCM and, and the EU. Um, so I hope I got all that more or less. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then if we move to our second session uh, on bringing the small care fisheries, we heard first about FTS, some um, an organization that we heard quite a lot about, and I have also heard a lot about it before today. Um, a very important organization, I'd say, it's the European Network of Women in the Fisheries, working to promote women in women participation in decision making processes in connection with the EU. Um, when we have um, some testimonies from women in fisheries, um, there are still relatively few women in fisheries, but those who are there do the same work as men, and some are also very famous. Um, but there are still many challenges, um, and we heard um, it could have been that tradition still guide also how different association work and how they're structured and how women are not necessarily represented in the leading positions. And more generally, also lack of gender equality, practice practices, attitudes. Um, women may be part of a meeting and speak, but maybe not even listen to in the same way as man would be. Um, on a meeting that organized that hours that are not convenient to women because the uh, double responsibility of family and work is not recognized and um, considered. And um, there were some suggestions for a way forward to change the situation and promote gender equality, which would include both positive uh, building and education. Uh, access to higher education for women, but this means then translating to effective participation, not just to, to the capacity on education to say the that, but to be linked to participation and um, promote women participation in general, including science. And there was also a suggestion to um, have a talk about things that we use language that gender people, um, which may then make us see things differently. We also need better data. I want to suggest that financial incentives could be way forward from having more women involved in fisheries, which is something that does not exist now. Um, there may there is still be traditional roles and attitude that they also have women themselves may see their role with regard to balance and having family and children and and working in fisheries. And then we also had a discussion about the generational shift that it's not only women, but it's more general for small fisheries than you. Um, and um, there were different, um, um, a bit of a discussion about this access to quotas, but um, it's a complex issue and I don't think it's solved out quite uh, today. And that was the end of my notes. Uh, if anyone would like to add something, I'd be very happy to be here. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Zayden. I think we are exhausted for the day. I think we can just go to the next discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.